Good Saturday. You're tuning in to 7 edition. I'm Helena Krishnamurti and these are tonight's top stories. Powerful storm wrecks havoc in three northern states. ID Lada Exodus causes massive traffic jam on major highways. And Myanmar landslide kills at least 34 people and wounding over 40. We begin tonight's bulletin with this story. Heavy rains and strong winds pummeled the northern states of Kedah, Perlis and Penang last night, ruining the Hari Raya Aidilada celebration for many families. There was one fatality in Kedah while over a dozen people were injured in that incident that started at 8 p.m. and continued until 2 a.m. this morning. Perlis also was hit by another round of strong winds later today, causing more damages. The storm also uprooted hundreds of trees and caused power outages, as well as damages to homes, schools and other buildings at numerous locations. According to Tanaga Nasional Berhad, TNB, a total of 1,595 reports were lodged on the electricity disruptions all over the three states and it has so far resolved at least 650 of the complaints. All relevant agencies are currently focusing on cleanup works. In Kedah, at least 10 people were injured in the storm which left widespread damage, including in Langkawi. Over 20 areas on the island were affected, while the rest of the state saw over 560 homes in 11 districts damaged by the storm. In Penang, seven people were treated at the Subrang Jaya Hospital and Penang Hospital for injuries sustained during the storm. The victims, who are residents and traders, were hit after their roofs and stalls were blown off by winds. Multiple fallen trees and property damage were also reported in several areas in Georgetown, Subrang Perai and Balik Pulau. Three evacuation centres have been opened to house 71 people after their homes were wrecked by the storm and strong winds. Many houses and business premises were also affected by the storm in Perlis. Fallen trees and electricity poles had also caused traffic obstruction and road accidents, but no loss of life or injuries were reported. The Malaysian Meteorological Department, or Met Malaysia, said it was caused by Typhoon Lakima that is currently battering China, and it had stretched into southern Thailand last night. Wind speeds that was recorded was at about 100 kilometers per hour. Met Malaysia also said the worst is over and there would be not a second wave caused by Typhoon Lakima. However, thunderstorms are expected in Kelantan, Terengganu, Sandakan, as well as the west coast and interior of Sabah this evening. Some rural areas in Pera and Perlis were also likely to be affected. Meanwhile, a woman motorcyclist was killed after she was hit by a piece of flying zinc sheet in Jitra Kedah during the storm last night. The victim, 27-year-old Marzia Cheh Omar, was riding a motorcycle when she was hit by the metal debris, causing her to fall off her vehicle. She was then run over by a car that was trailing right behind her. The driver of the car, a 62-year-old man, said he could not avoid her as the same zinc sheet had covered his windscreen. The victim's body was sent to Jitra Hospital for post-mortem. And now to get more insights on the line with us is the Senior Director of National Aviation Meteorological Centre, Dr. Mohamad Hisha Mohamad Anip. Hello, Doctor. Thanks for joining us this evening. Following Typhoon, Liki Typhoon Lakima, there is no Following Typhoon Lakima, there is also another super typhoon approaching. Can you share with us details on this? Also, we were caught unprepared by last night's storm brought by Typhoon Lakima in the northern states. Moving forward, Doctor, is there any way for us to prepare for such powerful storms? Typhoon Lakima uh, has made a landfall uh, early this morning at about uh, 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, as a result of that, uh, we expect the typhoon to weaken and uh, to dissipate in another one or two days. 
However, uh, there is another typhoon uh, already formed uh, behind this uh, Lekima, typhoon Lekima. This one is known as Typhoon Crosa, which is now located over the northeast part of the Philippines. And we expect the typhoon, this Crosa typhoon, uh, is expected to uh, move uh, or pass uh, the southern part of Japan. As a result of this uh, typhoon formation, we still can expect uh, a strong wind uh, over our region, especially over the northern states of uh, the peninsula. Uh, the storm that hit uh, the northern states last night is not due to the direct impact of uh, Typhoon Lakima. Actually, we can see that it is an uh, indirect impact due to the strong wind that comes from the uh, uh, Indian Ocean that converge with the wind or from the southern part uh, of the uh, Strait of Malacca. As a result of this convergent wind, uh, we, we had a, a weather system that we call a squall line. Normally, squall line will take a few hours to form and uh, after that, it will bring normally very uh, heavy rainfall in a short uh, period uh, together with a strong wind. The, the event that, that formed last night over northern states, uh, some of our stations has recorded uh, more than 100 km uh, per hour of wind, strong wind. And this definitely uh, can cause uh, uh, damage to a very weak structure. Uh, and also uh, for the branches, tree branches, as well as a very old tree that can fall. Uh, so we do expect this uh, type of event to happen another one or two days, maybe uh, during the afternoon or early night. Uh, and we hope that the public can uh, be a little bit aware of the weather phenomena that uh, take place uh, over your area. Thank you. Now, thank you very much, Dr. Hisham, for your time and insights. Moving on, the haze situation is currently deteriorating in Sarawak and Selangor with Miri reaching the hazardous level while Klang recorded unhealthy readings. As of 7 p.m. today, the monitoring station at Miri Industrial Training Institute displayed an API reading of 390, which denotes hazardous since 2 a.m. today. Kuala Baram, another location in the state, also saw unhealthy air quality since 6 a.m. This is according to the Department of Envi Environment, DOE, which has 68 monitoring stations nationwide. Meanwhile, in Klang, the DOE also recorded poor air quality. Its monitoring station at Johan Setia showed an API of 114, which is also unhealthy. Other areas in Klang Valley are seeing moderate air quality. The haze, is, the haze situation is due to forest fires in Indonesia. Mass departure from the Klang Valley for the long weekend caused a heavy crawl on the North-South Expressway and other major highways today. Live traffic updates from Google Maps showed major roads with heavy traffic the whole day. Take a look. In the south of the Klang Valley, traffic was backed up from Nilai up to Seremban as people headed south. Major roads and highways such as the Duke, Jalan Gomba and the MRR2 was also clogged with slow-moving traffic as residents made their way to the east coast through the Gomba Toll. The jam continued after the Gomba Toll on the Karak Highway as there was heavy traffic near Genting Sempah and Bentong. Those travelling on the north-south expressway to the north was also stuck in heavy traffic from Sungai Bulo up to Goping Pera. This as we enjoy a long weekend in celebration for Hari Raya Haji, which saw many taking the opportunity to escape the city. Now it's day seven of the search for Nora Ann Koirin, a 15-year-old who mysteriously disappeared at a resort in Pantai Seremban. There are still no signs of the missing Irish girl despite a massive search mounted for her in the surrounding jungles. Her family for the first time appeared in public to thank all those involved in the search and rescue mission. Her husband, Sebastian Marie Philippe, was with her when she made the emotional speech early this morning. We want to say thank you to each and every one of you 
We know you're searching night and day for Nora. We see you working so hard and um, also praying with us, being with us. We know you have given up your time, especially at a special festival time, uh, to be with us here. It means the world to us and we are so grateful for everything that you are doing for us, everyone here and everyone who is helping who is not here. We are um, extremely impressed with uh, the effort, your expertise, your dedication, and we, we hope you find Nora, and thank you so much. Kira Mikasi. Search operations are ongoing every day from 7 a.m. to 4 p.m. with various agencies involved. Today's personnel strength is at 261 and now includes the Elite Police Jungle Commander Unit VAT-69, Three Senoy Prak units comprising Orang Asli police personnel are also on ground tracking her whereabouts. Other assets include helicopters that have been circling the thick jungles looking for any signs of the girl. Nora, who has learning disabilities, arrived here with her family from London on Saturday for a two-week holiday. The teenager was first reported missing the following day at 8 a.m. when the window in her bedroom was left open. Police have busted a cigarette distribution syndicate believed to be active in the peninsula and seized cartons of smuggled cigarettes worth 4.2 million ringgit in a raid in Mersing, Johor yesterday. Bukit Aman Internal Security and Public Order Department Director Datuk Sri Akril Sani Abdullah Sani said five men were nabbed during the operation. According to Datuk Seri Akril Sani, in a statement today acting on public tip-off, an operation dubbed Op Asap was carried out by a special operations command team. Police then recovered 25,750 cartons of U2 brand cigarettes. Cops also seized an Isuzu lorry as well as a Proton Vira car. He added the suspects detained are aged between 23 to 37 years old. All of them have been remanded for three days at the Mersing Police Headquarters to facilitate investigations under the Customs Act. Meanwhile, a food delivery rider was injured after he fought off two men who tried to steal his motorcycle in Petaling Jaya, Selangor. The two suspects stopped the victim claiming that he was riding a stolen bike and tried to ride away with it. A CCTV camera captured the incident at 2.50pm and the footage went viral online. Police are now hunting for both suspects. In Johor Bahru, a senior citizen died in a fire that engulfed a 24-hour car wash at Jalan Yahya Awal early this morning. It was understood that the 70-year-old man was trapped in the premise when it was engulfed in flames. 17 firemen with four fire engines rushed to the scene to put out the fire. However, 90% of the building was already destroyed by the blaze, believed to have been caused by a short circuit. When we come back, at least 18 dead as Typhoon Lakima slams China. Don't go away. We're back with foreign news. At least 34 people were killed when a landslide triggered by monsoon rains struck a village in eastern Myanmar. 47 others were left injured while authorities believe up to 100 more feared missing. Footage showed a huge brown gash on the hillside which marked where the deluge of mud descended on Friday wiping out 16 homes. Search and rescue teams worked through the night with excavators as well as their bare hands trying to find survivors and recover bodies from the deep sludge. The villagers, hill, the villagers hillside temple was left inundated leaving the pagoda's golden spire peeking out from beneath the mud. Torrential downpours have burst riverbanks across the country, while coastal communities have been warned of higher tides. At least 18 people have died and more than a million falls from their homes as Typhoon Lakima hit China. 
16 people remain unaccounted for after a landslide was triggered by the storm. Lakima made landfall in the early hours of Saturday in Wenling between Taiwan and China's financial capital, Shanghai, bringing torrential rain as well as heavy winds. The monster storm was initially designated a super typhoon, but weakened slightly before landfall when it still had winds of 187 km per hour. According to local weather bureau, more heavy rain is expected in Shanghai area as well as the eastern provinces of Anhui, Fujian and Jiangsu. More than a quarter of a million people were relocated in the city where the high-speed maglev train that links the city to one of its airports was suspended. Authorities had also warned possible flash floods, mudslides and landslides. Shanghai evacuated some 250,000 residents, with another 800,000 in the Zhejiang province also being taken from their homes. Nearly 300 flights were cancelled, while ferry and rail services were suspended as a precaution. Lakima had earlier swept past the northern tip of Taiwan on Friday, where nine people were injured, thousands of homes lost power temporarily, and more than 500 flights were cancelled. Last September, Typhoon Manghut slammed into mainland China, where authorities evacuated more than 2 million people. This after it left a trail of destruction in Hong Kong, as well as Macau, and killed at least 59 people in the northern Philippines. It's time for our daily segment, Clickbait, where we take a look at what's trending and making rounds in the cyber world today. Multilingualism may be common in multiracial Malaysia, but it is always heartwarming to witness Malaysians speaking in other languages other than their own mother tongue. Recently, a Malay and an Indian warmed the hearts of netizens after they were filmed chatting with each other in Mandarin in a viral video which garnered 180,000 views on Twitter. Take a look. The clip that you just saw is a rare sight, as both the teacher and student are conversing in a language other than their own mother tongue. According to Fatin, who uploaded the 45 seconds video, the Malay teacher is her colleague, who teaches Mandarin at Kulim Vocational College, while the Indian automotive student is currently taking language lessons from the teacher. Following the viral video, netizens mostly responded positively and that they felt quite proud watching the clip as not many people are open to learning another language. While others relate themselves with similar situation back when they were in Mandarin classes taught by teachers of other races. Ultraman fans can rejoice as Suburaya Productions TPC, the company behind over 50 Ultra series, will be producing new animated and live action shows. This after they finally secured the intellectual property for Ultraman through lengthy court battles in the US. Our trainee reporter Noor Fatima Zahra Ahmad has the details. Good news to all Ultraman fans. Suburia Productions announced that they will be releasing a new movie, which is a remake of the original Ultraman back in 1966. Fans, especially from older generations, can expect nostalgic moments from this film. The Shin Ultraman remake is expected to reunite Hideaki Anno and Shinji Higuchi to direct the live-action film and will be released in 2021. According to TBC, they also have exciting plans for the next three years, starting with Ultraman Taiga, the son of the legendary hero Ultraman Taro. Ultraman Taiga will have its own brand new series that will be available worldwide in 2020. TPC will also launch an online series called Ultra Galaxy Fight, which will be streaming on their official YouTube channel starting September 29th. The animation series on Netflix will also continue with Season 2. Besides that, the latest Ultraman live-action series Ultraman RB will air in Malaysia beginning August 30th. 
We asked Masayuki Nagatake, the president of TPC, what does it mean to him to have Malaysians of all ages still recognizing the iconic hero after being around for 53 years. It is very important for us because uh, we know that uh, all the people in Malaysia love Ultraman and uh, I believe uh, Ultraman is number one hero in Malaysia. So, uh, you know, it is very important for us that people love uh, Ultraman and uh, we want to keep bringing a new Ultraman in Malaysia. Um, because uh, there is uh, authentic in stories, uh, we talk about bravery, hope and compassion and, and uh, we keep a new, a new stories every year so we keep it fresh. As you saw, uh, we have been done, uh, awarded from um, um, that we have more spin-off stories so uh, number of stories is really key and the quality of the um, you know episodes that we develop is the key. Apart from that, it looks like Ultraman won't just be fighting kaijus, but also counterfeiters on the ground. Now that TPC owns all the intellectual property rights to the 50 heroes, and yes, including the monsters they fight, Nagatake issued a warning that they will be coming after those who sell counterfeit merchandise featuring them. So to all Ultraman's fans out there, be sure to only look out for original merchandise featuring their logo. I'm Nur Fatima Zara Ahmad reporting for 7 Edition. After the break, global releases for newly locally made video games. Details next. Thanks for staying with us. Now on to My Game On for the latest updates on gaming and esports. Media Prima Digital MPD collaborating with IG and Southeast Asia will be the official media partners for MDEC's upcoming Level Up KL 2019. The partnership deal with global digital firm Ziv Davis was announced during the Level Up KL press conference and hopes to develop the regional ecosystem of esports. Our trainee reporter Noor Fatima Zahra has the details. IGN is a familiar name in the gaming and entertainment industry, available in 30 international editions, 26 languages, and 115 countries, reaching a global audience of 196 million users across web, video, and social platforms. IGN is also one of the most internationally developed media brands in the world, not just in entertainment, but in any category. At Level Up KL, MPD struck a deal with the iconic company, hoping to further expand and its reach regionally, while also increasing the growth in its digital revenue. So Level Up uh, KL 2019 is a consumer uh, uh, game event uh, organized by MDEC and uh, IGN Southeast Asia and My Game On, which is a media prima digital uh, game uh, content platform. It will be the um, uh, official media partner for, for the event. Uh, and at Media Prima, we are very supportive about what the government wants to do uh, for for games and esports in general, and this is where we are. Why we're supporting the initiative because we want to be able to bring up the content. As for the interactive media head and deck, Mohan Lo, he hopes that the event can educate the public about various career opportunities in esports by having career zones for university students in the next event. Uh, Level Up KL is the celebration, right? Uh, it's a game festival celebrating all the Malaysian games industry. Uh, we are hoping to see, you know, great uh, products coming up from here, great esports tournaments, and in general, a celebration, right, with the fans of the of the industry. Media such as uh, IGN and My Game On is important, right, to highlight uh, the successes that the industry has had, to make Malaysians realize, right, that the great work and talent that is available, right, in the Malaysian industry. Uh, 
I think they they are also a voice, right, uh, for our creators, right, to connect, right, again with the public. According to him, in Malaysia, game revenue growth has picked up from 2016 to 2017 by 3.2 percent, reaching a staggering 587 million US dollars. He hopes that the local esports and gaming industry can grow rapidly, as well as put Malaysia's digital content and creative tech industry on the global map. Amdek has also been working closely with local video game developers Metronomic and Magnus. They revealed two exciting and unique new games that will be available to the public soon. All my music will ripple to the rims of the universe and back. Metronomic's debut game called No Straight Roads was set up by one Hazmir and puts music and sound at the heart of the gameplay. What's cool about the game is that it has Malaysian voice actors as well as music from our local scene. This game will be released globally on PlayStation 4 and on PC in early 2020. Meanwhile, the second game, Re Legend, will be released this August 30th globally through Steam. The game by Magnus features farming, crafting weapons, and even catching your own magical monsters and even evolving them. Re-Legend also features various Malaysian cultural icons such as the Rathisia, Hibiscus, the Moon Kite, or popularly known as Wau Bulai, and even Nasi Lema. Nor Fatima Zara Ahmad for 7 edition. Tomorrow, we celebrate the second of two most important Muslim holidays in the Islamic calendar, which is also known as the Festival of Sacrifice. On behalf of the team, we would like to wish our Muslim viewers a very blessed celebration with your loved ones and make sure to stay safe on the road. I'm Helena Krishnamurti. Thanks for tuning in to 7 edition and see you next time. Selamat Hari Raya, Adil Adha. <laughs> Allah Akbar Allah Akbar Allah, 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 Allah,